What is the deal, beautiful people? It's your boy Ramon, Lifestyles Defined. Let's talk about my Sony HVL F60M. <laughs> so I know it's a mouthful, but it really is a uh, it is a dope flash. I really, I really like this guy a lot. And you know, I there's so many other options out there, especially cheaper options. I think this guy. This guy is almost like a $500 flash retail. I think you can still get it uh, at a, uh, on sale. You could probably find it for around four, three fifty, somewhere around there. So it's a really expensive flash, but it has a lot to offer. And the reason I had to pick this up is, you know, when I started getting into flash photography, when I started to do a lot of client work, I, I quickly ran into the reason why you need a flash, right? You'd be out doing portraits and the sun would be out, whatever, or it'd be too dark. You just can't get your subject. There's the shadows in your in your in the subject's face, and you can't fix that in post. You need a flash. You need a fill flash. So I went out and I bought the uh, the Streak Light 360. Amazing flash, even more so for high speed sync. The problem with the Speed Light 360 is it has an external battery uh, connector to a power supply. And you gotta sort of put this thing on a tripod and it's it's too big. It's too big for me to just walk around myself. So I had to revert back to uh, something more traditional like a speed light. And you know, I'm the type of person where if I'm gonna if I'm gonna buy something, I try to get the best I could afford because it, it you know I get the, the most features and and, and get the, the, the best quality and you know just go from there. So for Sony, I, this is this is the best flash that Sony makes and, and that they have made in a while. And uh, I think deservedly so, there's a lot about this that I don't see in in a lot of other flashes. Now, I'm not a, I'm not a super flash nerd. I'm not a super photographer nerd. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that any of any of these things that it can do makes uh that i know or makes a difference versus another flash like no this was my first speed light my first on uh off camera flash i guess you you would call this off camera flash right so this was my first foray into learning how to shoot with a flash and i would say a year and a half later i finally got it it took me a while you know it's it was a long journey here and it was a lot of tutorials out there, but none of them really helped me. Uh, I think what helped me was learning how to shoot with the streak like first and then applying a lot of that uh, or those concepts to using the speed light. Now, what I'm talking about is, for instance, on on the streak light, you know, you just get the receiver, you put the wireless receiver or transceiver on the top of your camera and it triggers it triggers the the flash remotely the way the way you use this combination is you always expose for the background so you set your well your iso should always be fairly low when shooting flash photography so anywhere from uh i guess 100 to 400 should be fine but you you set your uh your aperture according to your subject. So you're shooting portraits, F5, uh, 6, F8 is fine. And then you sort of use, you use the, uh, the shutter to sort of dial in the exposure. And what, what took me so long to understand was it's, it's a delicate balance because when you think of fill flash, that's exactly what you're doing. So you're exposing for the background, the entire scene around the model, let's say you, you, you have this dope sunset in the background. Uh, you don't want the sunset to be lost when the flash comes on because the flash will overpower the sunset. No, you want the sunset to be nice and vibrant. So you set the camera there and then you introduce the flashlight. Now, it took so long to get it because there's still a lot of variables. Like I said, you still need to understand that your f-stop should be at a certain amount to, to get a certain amount of your subject in focus. And then you, you also need to understand the power of the, the amount of light you're throwing out from the flash. And, and of course, the closer or farther away you get from your subject, you put that light to your subject, gives you different looks. It could be softer, it could be harsher. Light falls off quicker or longer. It's it's so much that I had to learn there 
but I was then able to take that and apply it to, to the speed light. But the number one roadblock that had me uh, sort of stumped for a while, and, and I, I didn't use this thing for uh, probably a good seven months, was I couldn't figure out uh, the madness that the Sony would do when, when it's on. So when you put the flash on, hit, let me let me go back to, to this, the streak light. When I'm exposing for the background in the streak light, the screen is sort of, it's sort of black, it's dark. I can see and I can dial up the background how I wanted it. But trying to expose for the background using this guy, it would never work the same way because the camera would automatically make the LCD screen brighter to compensate for the fact that this was on there. And I, I was just lost. I, I couldn't I couldn't get my settings right. I didn't know what was going on. I thought it was it had something to do with, with TTL. I tried to turn TTL off. I tried putting this thing in manual mode and it was still happening. So my solution to getting around that, to shooting the way I'm used to shooting with a flash was I would simply turn it off. Right, so I would expose. I would turn the flash off. I would expose for the background and what I want to do, and then I would turn the flash on and adjust the power. I keep it in manual, and voila, it, it worked. I, one, it just clicked to me. Like one day I was just sitting on the couch and I was thinking about, oh man, that goddamn flash and this Sony. I can't figure it out. I can't, and it just clicked to me. Why don't I just turn it off? Um, to this day, I haven't found a setting in the camera to disable or to stop the camera from automatically making the LCD bright when I put the flash on there, but you know, it's fine. I'll just turn the flash off. It's no big deal. Uh, but there are other things, I mean, ab about the flash itself, it, it has this ability to tilt. And what I quite like is if I switch from landscape to portrait mode, I can kind of tilt the uh, tilt the flash and keep the, the flash power sort of even and, and on a level that I want it. And also that tilting thing is kind of cool for if you're indoors and you want to bounce it off of a specific wall, that's also there. There's also this, it's a video light. Um, it may sound kind of silly, but in, in the, in the event that you're in a really dark environment and you just want to kind of see to acquire focus, this is a really super handy thing. And then of course, if you're shooting video, you've got like an A7R 3 or you've got a, uh, any of the A7, the A7S, and you just want a good video light, this is this is it. This thing gets shockingly bright for uh, for a, a, a video light. And I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Why not just have a speed light and a video light in one? Sure. So overall, I mean, this flash has been really good to me. I have ran into an issue, I guess, earlier on, uh, it had a tendency to a lot of the models, people people who bought them, and this is why it, it kind of has a really bad review, even for the amount of power that it outputs and the fact that it does support high speed sync and the fact that it's got the video light. It wasn't a favorite flash because it did overheat. And I've experienced that overheating twice. Um, they say you can send it into uh, to Sony and they'll fix the firmware on it for you and, and it stops it, but I haven't seen it in quite a long time. So, I mean, I, I've done plenty of professional shoots with it in the meanwhile and, and it's been good to me. I, I, I quite like this flash. Recently, I found, uh, I bought, I, I forgot the model number, but it, it's, it's a smaller flash. Uh, I bought it to just sort of roll around with because it was so compact and I, f I came across the remote mode or the, the wireless control mode that, that's available on, on, on this big boy, which allows me to trigger it from the uh, from using the, the smaller flash from the Sony. So I can then take this off camera, put it on a light stand and then have it be a second flash. I thought that was super dope. Now I can even use it in conjunction with my streak light. I thought that is also super dope. So it's good to, again, me with the ideology that I'll just buy the best of the best. Here it is, you know, I'm, I'm running into features that it has 
that uh, I, I can find useful today versus if I went and just bought the cheapest version of the Flash and there'd be some stuff on there that, you know, like, damn, if I, if I ever get into this one day, I'd have to go buy a whole new Flash. But yeah, this, this Flash has been really good to me. In the future, you guys let me know. Uh, I have in my notes to do uh, sort of a video tutorial. Not, but you, you know, a tutorial to just cite how we do things. Uh, just going over how I do a lot of my shoots with flash photography. Uh, how, also, how I do some of my, my close-up macro work uh, using, using this guy. Um, let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. Hit the comments. If you have any questions about this, I'll be happy to answer it for you. And uh, thanks for checking out the video. It's your boy Ramon. I'm out of here. Peace. <laughs> well, I guess. And the reason we started Lifestyles to Find is because uh, if we weren't on camera arguing about these things, the technologies, the phones, the iPhones, the Androids, the cameras, the games, we'd be on the phone arguing about it. <laughs> we'd be in each other's houses arguing about it. So why not just put it in front of a camera for everyone to enjoy it the way we do? what lifestyles define is all about. We just